And joining us live via Skype is political analyst Lulu Elegbe to take a look at the reality of this matter. Good morning, Mr. Elegbe. Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm good to have you this morning. Um, I'm not sure whether you're able to see that report or not, but we'll bring you up to speed. At Plus TV Africa, we visited two uh, slum communities, Jegunle and Ugoburu community. And part of the things that we've heard, you know, are the people there complaining of hunger rather than, you know, COVID-19 being their biggest issues. How do you respond to that? I think it's unfortunate because I understand where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is that when, when they say things like, when people like that say things like, look, this is an elite issue, um, we don't have it, where our biggest problem is hunger, not COVID-19, I can understand why they're saying that. Because um, what's happened is that COVID-19 came into Nigeria from people that could afford to leave the country and come back into the country. Um, it wasn't here otherwise. So a lot of them feel hard done by. They feel, in um, quote unquote, the elite have brought this thing into the country and they're now suffering the consequences. And the reality is a lot of these people live, um, they, uh, they, their living is subsistence living. So it's, it's day to day for them. So when you lock down, I, don't get me wrong, I understand why, the, I understand the lockdown. I think it's necessary, quite frankly. But I can understand where they're coming from because for them, um, they have to deal with the, everything. They what their their next meal is is a day to day thing. It's not the same for um, many other people, but that's what it is for them. So that the lockdown will be affecting them in the way that it is, and and them thereby making those sorts of comments, I think it's perfectly understandable. We also have the reality of these people talking about not getting uh, palliatives, not getting any relief item. Does that suggest that you know these things are not really getting to those who are in actual need of it? I mean, that's always been the concern. Um, even if you look at what happens during elections, for example, when you have to get uh, voting materials and things like that to hard to reach communities, it's, um, it's riverine communities in Lagos, it's m even more remote um, locations outside of Lagos in, the, in parts of the north, for example. So that um, a lot of these um, relief materials um, it's hard to get to them, isn't new. I, I, I'm a bit disappointed that that wasn't planned for because we knew that these places were hard to reach. So there should have been a plan in place um, about how to get, get it to them in the first place. I'm, I'm going to assume that the lockdown, they didn't just wake up one morning and decide to do a lockdown. Um, I would assume that it's been thought through, um, the impacts, the consequences, how to deal with things like this. So it's, I think it's a bit disappointing to see that communities like this are still the ones suffering. They seem to be the ones bearing the brunt all the time. And it's, a, it's disappointing to see that that's, that's been the case again. Mm -hmm. And I mean, in terms of preferring solution, how best can the government devise a strategy that works and which can you know, assure the people and that those who really need this help are getting it, especially during this uh, lockdown? I think the, the key thing is community engagement. That's, I, I don't see how it can work in any other way because the people in the community understand that community um, better than anybody else, better than the government even. But then again, um, these places, regardless of what part of Lagos they are, they have elected representatives, at, um, whether, it's, uh, within, whether it's in the state house, whether it's in the federal house of representatives. These um, areas, certain areas are covered um, or these areas, I'm sure, are covered under um, certain constituencies. So having those sorts of conversations with the elected representatives, I think, would have been a good way to go in the first place. Okay, how do we get this relief materials to these constitu um, constituents in this hard-to-reach area? And having those sorts of engagements as an ongoing activity, I think, would be a good way to reach them. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, one of our ministers, Lai Mohammed, was quoted as saying in some media just yesterday that no one is hungry as, you know, the federal government has started distributing cash. But from the evidence of these reports, people are rightly hungry. You know, we went to two uh, communities already, Ajegunle and Ugoguru, both of them slum areas. So is there a disconnect between the leader's perspective and the people's reality? Unfortunately, there's a massive disconnect. Um, 
I'm not sure what the minister is talking about when he says nobody's going hungry. All you have to do, I mean, you, you don't even have to look far to look to see that that statement cannot possibly be true. So I'm not sure what he was trying to imply or what he was trying to say by making such a statement because clearly it's not true. Um, people are hungry. Um, he said they've distributed um, whether it's money, whatever it is. But the fact of the matter is, A, it's not getting to a lot of people that are in actual need, and B, uh, many of the people that it does, many of the people that um, I think need it the most will probably not see anything. And that's why, that's where a lot of the frustration comes out. And my worry is that it doesn't start to boil over because this is, um, this is the second week of the lockdown. There's a possibility. We all know that it, it could be extended. We don't know that for a fact. But I guess it depends on how things go um, from NCDC and how things are going in terms of the infection rates. So if this, if this gets extended, then I would hope that um, there more thoughts goes into how to get this relief materials to those that are most in need. Saying things like nobody's going hungry, I think is very unhelpful. Thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Legbeda, for joining us. And please do keep safe. Thank you very much, you too.